You preach hypocritical composure, but when it really matters, are you calm? No, you are not, pathetic liar. You consume yourself in inner rage. Your tongue speaks cold daggers, your eyes flash with hatred. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I will be talking about the fifth volume of Carl Jung's Black Books. So this video is a part of a series of seven videos and each video is dedicated to a, a separate volume of the Black Books. And after these seven uh, videos I will also make a full summary and a full review of the, the Black Books. So if you do not want to miss the following videos then also please consider uh, subscribing to this YouTube channel. So, just as a short summary of the fourth volume, uh, throughout the fourth volume of the Black Books, we can see that Carl Jung is acquiring more and more confidence during the interactions with the figures of his own unconscious. Carl Jung is actively challenging these figures, resulting in some really interesting conversations. And these conversations and thoughts, which emerged while Jung was writing the Black Books, they would be the source of the most important and most influential ideas of Carl Jung. And throughout the fifth volume of the Black Books, we can clearly observe why Carl Jung himself also concluded that all of his most important ideas had their source within this exploration set out within the Black Books. So he wrote, for example, All my works, all my creative activity has come from those initial fantasies and dreams which began in 1912. One such idea is particularly present throughout the fifth volume of the Black Books, and this is Carl Jung's idea of the shadow. So this will also be the main topic of this video. So throughout most of the fifth volume of the Black Books, Carl Jung is presented with the darker side of his own personality. Through conversations with his unconscious, Carl Jung is, for example, criticized for his selfishness. He wrote, you gloatingly leave others in the lurch if they only get caught in your snares. You exploit their naivety in order to present yourself wiser and superior. You play at modesty and not, do not mention your merit, in the certain hope that someone else will do it for you. You are disappointed and withdraw hurt if this doesn't happen. Moreover, Jung's unconscious confronts him with the fact that, although Jung finds it important to stay calm and does everything to, to appear calm, this calmness, calmness is merely an act. He wrote, you preach hypocritical composure, but when it really matters, are you calm? No, you are not, pathetic liar. You consume yourself in inner rage. Your tongue speaks cold daggers, your eyes flash with hatred. Carl Jung's unconscious indicates to Jung that Jung is using his acts to avoid, to avoid doing what he really must do. He wrote, I will crush your glorious superiority under my feet and stamp it into the dirt. All this shall happen to you because of your feeling of inferiority that you abuse day by day in order to avoid your task. These observations can of course be quite uh, confrontational, however from these confrontations Jung came to the conclusion that something like a shadow exists. Uh, he argued that one, when one explores one's own unconsciousness, one will inevitably be confronted with one's own shadow, a shadow which is always present but which the indiv individual attempts to hide from the true world because it consists of the darker, less desirable aspects of the individual's character. And later in his book, The Archetypes of the Collective Unconscious, Jung would define the idea of the shadow more thoroughly. And this idea has, in my opinion, its roots within this fifth volume of the Black Books. So Carl Jung wrote, Whoever looks into the mirror of the water will see first of all his own image. Whoever goes to himself risks a confrontation with himself. The mirror does not flatter. It faithfully shows whatever looks into it. Namely, the face we never show to the world because we cover it with the persona the mask of the actor, but the mirror lies behind the mask and shows the true face. Jung believed that this was the first test, a test which is a part of the exploration of the unconscious. And for some, this confrontation with the shadow would already be so frightening that further exploration would become impossible. He wrote, this confrontation is the first test of courage on the inner way, a test sufficient to frighten off most people. However, as long as one avoids this confrontation, the individual might project his or her shadow upon others and the world in general, Carl Jung wrote, for the meeting with ourselves belongs to the more unpleasant things that can be avoided. 
as long as one can project everything negative into the environment. I believe that this is also why Jung would later argue in his book Aeon that the world could become a victim of a conflict that is not resolved within the individual. He wrote, the psychological rule says that when an inner situation is not made conscious, it happens outside, as fate. That is to say, when the individual remains undivided and does not become conscious of his inner opposite, the world must perforce act out the conflict and be born in, into opposing halves. However, if we are capable to see our shadow and are able to accept this darker side of our own personality, we become aware of our personal unconscious and can thereby benefit from this inner, inner harmony, uh, Jung wrote. But if we are able to see our own shadow and can bear knowing about it, then a small part of the problem has already been solved. We have at last brought up the personal unconsciousness. And as a result, one no longer needs to hide oneself. So Carl Jung's idea of the shadow is one of his most well-known ideas. It is extremely interesting to see by reading the fifth volume of the, of the Black Books, how Jung actually came to the realization of the existence of the shadow. And as we can see in the fifth volume of the Black Books, uh, Jung learned about this idea through the exploration of his own unconscious. And I think that this is also why the editor of the Black Books, Sono Shamdasani, wrote in the introductory volume that Jung believed that the ideas which he was uncovering did not apply just to himself, but were psychological char characteristics common to all. He wrote, in Jung's view, his undertaking pertained not just to himself, but to others as well. He had come to view his fantasies as stemming from a general, metaphoric layer of the psyche, which he named the collective unconsciousness. So, becoming aware of one's shadow and accepting one's shadow are important parts of the integration of the unconscious. And if you're interested in this uh, process further, I've made a separate video about it uh, as well, which you can see on your screen right now as well. Um, yeah, and for now that was all about the fifth volume of the Black Books. If you do not want to miss the following volumes, volume 6 and 7, then please consider subscribing. And if you have any comments, suggestions or ideas, then uh, please let me know as well. So, thank you.